welcome you all. This is Fine Art Magazine's online jury show at the Daria Deshik Studio in, in Bridgehampton, New York. And I'm assuming you can all hear me. This is the Art Hampton weekend in uh, Bridgehampton, and it is the, the art event of the season in the Hamptons. And I want to welcome Miss Kenny Mann, a very dear and old friend of mine. Hello, Jamie. Hello, Miss Kenny. Kenny, thank you for coming. Thank you for being here today. Kenny, now you're a film producer, correct? Can you tell me a little bit about your film, the name of your most recent film? Well, the, the last one I finished, I make documentary films, and the last one was about the impact of human rights education uh, in African countries like Senegal. It was more an educational film and for the human rights community. And much to my absolute amazement, um, I didn't think people were really interested in a topic like this except academics, but it's gone all over the place. It's been in um, eight You've festivals. Been, yes, eight yeah. festivals. Which yeah. festivals have you been in? Oh, there was the San Diego uh, Black Film Festival, the Hamptons International Black Film Festival, La Jolla Independent Film Festival, Clearwater in Florida, Nashville in near Chicago. Wow. I've forgotten. I mean, a few. Well, the San yeah. Diego, I know, is a very prestigious a big one. Yeah. Uh, film festival yeah. for black yeah. films yeah. in America. I was thrilled. And you come naturally into this uh, milieu because you grew up where, Kenny? I grew up in Kenya, and so I'm always interested in all things African and my parents were very very involved in so-called development aid I sort of hate that expression so I put it in quotes so our dinner table conversations were always about how do you help do you help you know what about the starving people what about hunger what about poverty you know, this is my mantra and your dad was involved with very involved well he eventually my parents were Jewish refugees who Correct. came to Kenya and he became the director of veterinary services in Kenya and in charge of animal husbandry things like Through that the World Health Order. Well, later, yes, yeah. Later. He worked for the Kenya government for years. So as a kid, you know, I was taken up into the arid districts of northern Kenya and looked at cattle being slaughtered, you know, and, and sort of learned and, and worked with nomadic people, you know, it's kind of in my and blood. And which of the tribes you had exposure to? I don't recall exactly. Well, our farm originally was among the Maasai. Okay, that was it. But um, my dad worked in northern Kenya a lot, which is Samburu, similar related tribes, Pokot, Turkana. So I grew up with this, this kind of education, you know, around the dinner table, wondering about, you know, being white, living in Africa, being Jewish in a British colony. Did you think you were white? I, I knew I was white. No, I understand, yeah. but yeah. did you think you were white? I don't know. We oh, never okay. thought about it. I mean, in those days, before independence, uh -huh. you know, Kenya has three major populations, white, African, Asian, uh -huh. and we all lived very peacefully, but parallel lives. Uh -huh. It wasn't exactly integrated. It wasn't like South Africa with apartheid or anything, yes, but yes. We, we had naturally rather separate lives. Okay. And so the film I'm working on now is about identity, because now right. I realize the impact that oh, that had on me. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. But the cultures had stayed more intact than, let's say, South Africa. The tribal Very cultures much so. had stayed They still intact. are, yeah. And some yes. of them, uh, actually, like the Maasai, they actually reject 20th century Development. I've, I've met Maasai who've been educated at Princeton and Harvard and have come back right. and wear their natural robes and live the Maasai life and are very happy with them. Which is a tremendous, uh, there's an international culture, uh, an interest in the Maasai culture that really is as unusual for the size of the, the body of people. Well, that's a good question, yeah. It's a very small population and of course because Kenya is such a tourist place or used mm -hmm. to be, and the Maasai tend to live close to Nairobi, so they're easy okay. to see. Okay. So everybody's familiar with them, and they're so beautiful, you know, and yes. they do their amazing dances. And, well, that's the first yeah. thing you told me about from your background when you were a kid, but the more yeah. interesting thing is you. Now, I know I met you when you were a writer, when you were a yeah. fledgling writer on Long Island, yeah. and you used to write for us That's right. in, uh, for Fine Art Magazine. That's true. Well, I wasn't we really a fledgling writer. No, you were an established I writer, but you were fledgling Long Island. Long Island, writer. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you were my. Uh, I arrived here on April the sixth, nineteen eighty-two, and I think by April the fourteenth, I was working for you. Really? You I didn't close. know yes. it was that. Very, uh, very that close. I didn't remember. Yeah. 
And now you've gone on, you teach at Stony Brook? And not at Stony Brook, no, I teach at, um, no, I teach at a film school in Manhattan, Digital oh, okay. Film Academy. No, I've always made films, you know, it's always been a crossover. Oh, okay, I misunderstood. Okay. Yeah, I just had a long passage where I didn't make movies. Oh, okay. But um, I went to film school, I actually always oh, did want to make films. I didn't films. know that. Yeah. I thought you were teaching at uh, Stony Brook. I was, I was teaching at Stony Brook at a school, an international college called Global College, which used oh, to be okay. out here at Long Island, now it's in Brooklyn. Okay. A very interesting school. I, I teach okay. different things, you know. Okay. But now I'm sort of really into the filmmaking. And you're working on your second film. Well, it's actually my seventh film. Well, seventh, seventh film. Eighth, eighth film. Yeah. But it's the, um, it's the one following the film with great success that you've just had. Yes, it's the current one, yeah. Okay. And it's very different. That, that earlier films have been sort of educational, very straightforward mm -hmm. documentary. This is a much more artistic work, work because it's my story, I have the freedom <laughs> to play and mm -hmm. explore mm -hmm. film as media mm -hmm. and play with time and memory and you know it's that kind of film. But well, we have to sit down and we have to do the Fine Art TV interview. I'm so flattered that you came. Is it this I have fine one. Art TV yeah, yeah. Well, there's a longer one. We'll get you at the studios. Yeah. But I have one last question for you. Yeah. What inspires you to communicate? What inspired you? What brought you into this medium? I think film, you know, for me, because I love music, I love storytelling, I love the process of editing, and I love art. So it brings all those things together. I've always been fascinated by the medium of film, you know, it just kind okay. I'm not really very good at anything, but when you put all of them together, then I, I can manage. <laughs> you're a brilliant writer and you're good at everything you do. <laughs> no. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that was Kenny Mann for Fine Art Magazine. Kenny, what's your website? Oh, www. I love saying that. Rafiki, R A F I K I Productions with an S on the end, dot com. Rafiki Productions. Com. And if anybody wants to email you, what's the email? They can, if you go to the website, you'll find a, a form that you can fill in to be in touch okay. with me.